Grace and peace to you this day and welcome to worship at Park Church. My name is Caleb Sadama. I'm the pastor here at Park. I'm glad to be with you here today. Now friends, let us begin with taking a moment to center ourselves, bring ourselves into God's presence. Let us pray. In all the world there is only you who brings us unwavering love, O God. In the great and terrible times of life, your grace is unchanging. You offer the same hope for tomorrow as you offered yesterday. And you call us to the same dedication and faith today as you did in the beginning. As we worship you, change us to think not of ourselves, but of others. And worship not our own desires, but worship you. And may we ever find contentment in doing your will. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Before we can hear God's truth spoken in love, we must free ourselves from all that obstructs us from honest, that all the, from all that obstructs us from honestly acknowledging our wrongdoing. So let us examine our hearts and confess our sin to God. Let us pray. Nurturing God, like a hen gathers her brood under her wings, you desire to gather your children. But division and disagreement plague us. We cling to rigid certainties, approach each other in arrogance, and we fail to listen. We walk away from conflict rather than working through it. Forgive us, holy God. Help us mature in faith and relationship. Help us build each other up in love. Amen. Do not fear, says the Lord, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Thanks be to God. We are forgiven and freed. Amen. Before we go to the reading of, the, of God's holy word and the proclamation thereof, let us first go to God in prayer. God, our soul's satisfaction comes from you. As we hear these words, may you transform the mere human words written in the book, of, in the book and spoken out loud into your words. And may we hear them and may they transform our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's reading comes to us from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Listen now for the word of God. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of his tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb and saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet, as, as, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do, did, I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and their Father, to my Lord and your God, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I chose to preach on this passage from John, which we typically hear at Easter, uh, because this is the story that brings us the sure hope 
that we have in Jesus and the testament to what God does in our lives. God reaches into the graves that we dig for ourselves, the graves that the world tries to bury, bury us in, and pulls us out of them and says to us, you are not done. A couple months ago, when the session decided to make this, this a day of celebration, things were really improving with regard to the pandemic. And we anticipated that surely in August, they'd be even better. Sadly, the virus is starting to make a bit of a surge and it is putting a bit of a damper on the overall festive mood. And yet, we still have cause to celebrate. We can celebrate that Park Church as a congregation is still here. The past 16 months have been too much for some congregations and they have sadly permanently closed. But that has not been the case for us, thankfully. Thankfully, God is not done with us as a congregation, and we still have a role to play in the world. And though virus numbers are starting to climb, we can here celebrate that we are still doing relatively well. Our weekly new case numbers in LaSalle County are far below what they were just a few months ago. Further, we can celebrate that while COVID-19 is still a new virus in the grand scheme of things, and we are still learning new things about it, we know far more than we did about COVID when this first started back in last March. We know that mask wearing is indeed an effective, so an effective measure in slowing the transmission of the virus, and we have readily available vaccines that work even better than that. It's really tempting to just ignore the, uh, the situation ignore the COVID resurgence and, and just throw our hands in the air and just party down because I am so ready to do that. But there is nothing righteous or helpful at all about ignoring the suffering of others and ignoring the reality that this serious situation persists. I love to stand up here and say all is well, but doing so right now would be a lie. Yet it does not mean that we should not celebrate. That does not mean there is no joy to be found. In fact, the, serious of the, situ the seriousness of the situation makes it even more important to find joy. As Christians, our joy doesn't come from any external factors. Not wealth, not stability, not even health. Now, those things certainly do make it a lot easier to be happy. But no, our joy, our joy comes from the grace of Jesus Christ. From the God who's active in our lives, who loves us enough to become human just to show us how close God desires to be with humanity. The God who is committed to share, and committed enough to us to share the human experience along with us. And the one who is right this minute bringing us closer to God's own self and pulls us out of the abyss of sin into new life and sending us out to, to be ministers of Jesus Christ, to work with Christ in giving the world hope. The more time goes by, the more I see how God works through people to achieve God's ministry. I experienced one example this past week. On Monday, I sat down to work on this sermon and I had absolutely nothing. I had no idea how to write something that's supposed to be celebratory when maybe I, when I feel like maybe we shouldn't be celebrating. I prayed, God, you, you've got to take care of this because I, I just can't. I literally have nothing. I cannot do this. Within a, about 20 minutes, two different members of the congregation texted me and, and they, gave me, they gave me hope. They gave me something to go on. They gave me joy. They helped me see where I needed to go. Now, prayer doesn't always work that quickly, I'll, I'll, I'll admit, but this time it did. And moreover, it shows that God works through people to give that direction, that joy, that hope, even when they themselves don't realize that they're doing it. Celebrate that we have a God that loves us and acts in the world for the betterment of all. Find the good you see around you and hold on to it. Hold on to it far tighter than you're tempted to hold on to the bad. And when you do, remember that you're called by God to help other people find the good too. If we are indeed heading into a time of increased COVID infection and the potential return to mask mandates and some level of a return to the previous precautions, we each have the ability to make it better for each other than the first time around. 
We've been here before. We know how bad it can get and we know better how to stay safe. So we know how important it is to be the reason that someone smiles. Call people who you haven't had, who, who you know that are having a hard time. Or call people that you just haven't talked to in a while. Or heck, just call people. Human connection and talk about something other than the pandemic. Send a text, send an email, send an old fashioned letter. Do something to make them feel better or do something to honest to God, improve their lives. Not just make them feel better, but to make their lives better. We can't celebrate the end of the pandemic today as we all want to, but we can all get vaccinated. Most all of us, unless you have a medical reason why you can't, most of us can get vaccinated and we can all wear a mask so that we can create a world in which this virus has nowhere to hide. And there's something else to be joyful about. This pandemic will not be the end of humanity. We will endure, which means the church will endure. There will be a time after COVID-19 and the church needs to be prepared for it. Now, one of the hardest things for me as a pastor since March of last year was that the pandemic was all anyone ever wanted to talk about. More specifically, they wanted to talk about when we're gonna get back in the building, when we're gonna roll back the precautions, when we're gonna to try to get back to life as usual, whether or not it was a smart idea to do so or not. And it drove me crazy because I wanted to talk about, you know, God. I want to talk about strengthening our faith in this time. I want to talk about how we can minister to people in, not only in the midst of the pandemic, but after the pandemic. I want to talk about how we can adapt and be smart and be safe and be careful about the pandemic and still do what we need to do. And I want to talk more so about what God is calling us to do beyond the pandemic. Who we are as a congregation, who we are as God, as who God has called us to be going forward. Now, God calls people and congregations to be a positive, upbuilding force in specific times and specific places. So how is God calling us to be a blessing in Streeter, both during the pandemic and after? In July's session meeting, it was brought up by one of our elders that we need a big project in our community that we can wrap our arms around, something that we can really attack and, 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 and put our, our energy and attention into, something that we can do to benefit the community, addressing the problems that our town has. Now, I hadn't planned on bringing this up in quite this manner or quite this soon, but I felt the spirit moving this week. So I'll put this out there and see if the spirit moves anybody else in the same way. Since, since about last October, I've been involved with an organization called Streeter Recovery Home. It's a stepway house for men recovering from drug and alcohol addiction, which claims to help guys who are, already, who are early on their journey to sobriety by putting them in close contact with guys who have been more successful over a long time in maintaining that sobriety. It provides a better living option than just returning to the environment in which they were drinking and doing drugs because often when you go back into that environment where you were doing those bad behaviors, you fall back into those same bad behaviors. Now, Street Recovery Home is just one organization in this town that is working to do the righteous work of getting people out of the self-destructive cycle of substance abuse and each of these organizations needs all the help they can get they need to know that god reaches into the graves that we dig for ourselves and and, and pulls us pulls us out into new life and tells us you are not done people in the grips of addiction need to hear that they need it desperately but they don't often hear it if we want to do something that takes a that takes on a great problem in our community and bless the specific time and place in which we find ourselves, taking real action to fight this plague of addiction and, it, and aid its victims is a fantastic, ambitious, and worthy blessing to give to our town. So I'm just gonna put that out there and see if the spirit moves anyone in the same way. So friends, today we celebrate. We don't celebrate the passing of the danger of COVID. 
We don't celebrate not ever needing to worry about masks and social distance again. But we celebrate that by the grace of God, we are here, that we have a purpose. And as far as the plagues of COVID-19 and substance abuse go, and so much more, we are celebrating the fact that we can do something about it. Because God working through us can do more than we can ever ask or imagine. And, and to quote Margaret Mead, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, thoughtful and committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, give us the trust to follow you. Give us the commitment to do as you lead. And give us the joy to just be able to get out of bed and face the rotten things of this world. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Friends, let us pray. Loving God, through Jesus Christ, you promise to hear us when we pray in his name. Confident in your presence and your attention to us, we lift the needs of the church, our communities, and the world to you in prayer. We pray for the church set in this world to be a model community, a body knit together in love. Help the church fulfill the calling to which we are called, to live together in unity, to bear with one another in love. May the church reflect how people belong together and how our gifts are to be shared. We pray for the communities in which we live and work, for people who are stressed, for the unemployed looking for work, for the elderly who are lonely, for the ill in need of healing, for all who are fearful. May we turn to each other in time of need, O oh God. May we build each other up so we can share the load of life's challenges. We pray for our broken yet beautiful world. Help us, holy God, to hear the cries of the hungry and the suffering. Help us to set, us aside, to set aside human impulses of greed and vain ambition so that we might strive for peace and justice. Help us reorder our lives so that we all might have the rightful share of food, medical care, and shelter, and our planet might thrive with renewed love and care. Inspire in us a love of our earth and all those who call this planet home. United as a family of faith and as the body of Christ, we lift these prayers to you through the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The earth is the Lord and all that is in it. The earth belongs to the Lord and, Lord and to him alone. God has given to us many good gifts and calls us to respond. Now let us give of ourselves, of our time, of our prayers, of our kind words, and of our possessions. Let us pray. God of all, you give us life, you give us hope. And we give to you all that we are. And may you fill us with the joy, with your joy and peace to become ever more your disciples every day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now we come to the celebration of the Lord's table. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. People will come from east and from west, from north and from south, to sit at table in the kingdom of heaven. Friends, this is the table that the Lord has prepared for us. This is not the table of Park Presbyterian Church, not the table of the Presbyterian Church USA. This is our Lord's table. And our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ invites all who claim him and wish to follow him to come and partake. Friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us pray. Eternal God, holy and mighty, it is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise and to worship you in every place where your glory abides. You laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. They shall perish, but you shall endure. You are always the same, in your year, and your years will never end. You made us in your image and called us to be your people, but we turned from you, leaving sin and death to reign. Still, you loved us and you sought us. In Christ, your grace defeated death and opened the way to eternal life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the heavenly choirs and with all the faithful of every time and place, who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, 
God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory and blessing are yours, O holy God. For in your mercy you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ. He took our human nature and suffered death on the cross for our redemption. There he made a perfect sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. We praise you that before, suffer, before he suffered and died, our Savior gave us this holy sacrament and commanded us to continue until he comes again. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rying, rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Merciful God, pour out your Holy, your holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine, that in eating and drinking we may be made one with Christ and one another. And as we come to the table that he prepared, we pray the prayer that he taught, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. On the night that our Lord, Lord was betrayed, he took bread and blessed it. He broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after they had eaten, he took the cup and he poured it, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, which is being poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's saving death until he comes again. Friends, take and eat, take and drink, the body and blood of Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, that the bread that we break and the cup that we bless may be the communion of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place, as this bread is Christ's body for us. Send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Amen. Friends, go and take care of one another. Be the reason someone smiles today. And go and improve someone's life because we can do something about it. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and give you grace. Grace not to sell yourself short, but grace to risk something big for something good. Grace enough to know the world is now too small for anything but the truth, too terrified for anything but love. God, take your minds and think through them. God, take your lips and speak through them. God, take your hands and work through them. And God, take your hearts and set them on fire. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm -hmm.